In the jungle of game boxes, there is so much to buy, so much to see and so much to play. But the question remains what should you pick up or what should you avoid? In this video series I want to help you. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell because there's absolutely a jungle of these things out there. And if you have any questions let me know in the comments, maybe it can help you out or just make another video. Because I just really love to help you out. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome, touch you tuning in. In this video we are going to talk about a mini jungle inside of a jungle of game boxes. We're going to take a close look at the Super Console X family, what is up with these things, what can you expect and what is maybe the best one for you. There are a lot of these different boxes with all kinds of different specifications. But we're not going to do all like a wicked nerdy time in this video. I just want to quickly explain what is the difference, what basically can you do with them, and also like what can you expect, especially for the people who are just new to this stuff. Like what can you expect from it? Because like the description they're always using are like fancy as it can be, but in reality sometimes it can be quite deceiving. And not even to talk about the different kind of game boxes you can pick up nowadays. There are like even companies call them themselves Super Console X, but they have nothing to do with this freaking lineup. So what is a Super Console X? So basically what it is, and this is the best example, they have like this HK1 box. It can be all kinds of Android boxes, most of the time they are using very old technology. The reason I'm picking up this one, because it is a newer one, but it didn't even put the effort, maybe in the future, but now when I'm making this video, trying to create something of a special label on it. You can see it's just an Android box and with this Android box you can add an SD card that will boot up in a different kind of software. And the software itself is called MULEC. MULEC is basically like an all-inclusive Linux operating system that can be configured for your Android box and then you can basically like play your games very easily. Also, if you're going to get yourself like an HK1 box or something different, you can buy these things dirty cheap sometimes because they are like old technology. Despite like some of them having like some, like say back price tags, some of them like are not like great for playing some games depending on what you want to play. But that's something we're going to talk about in this video too. So let's talk about first where did it all start. It started with this model. This is the Super Console X. It's powerful performance, but it's absolutely rubbish because it's not through. This thing does <laughs> that come with a very powerful chip, also called as the S905 series. Like we have all kinds of versions, we're going to talk about a little bit later there. So when we have like this version, they very briefly released this. This is basically like the same box like this. They didn't even put the effort to put the Pro in, but you had also the Pro Edition. And there was basically nothing Pro about it because it has like a similar chip. Maybe there was some minor difference, not going to do in depth over here. But I just wanted to see like you have like two versions. Something was kind of improvement was this Super Conflict stick. They had a completely new re design of the box, is also include the stick. Here we can see like it uses the S905X model. So this is basically the chipset they were using also in other boxes. But what I did like about it, that we have like a different form factor you can just plug in and just play your games. I must say that they are using old technology inside these boxes. The S905 is not powerful enough to run let's say a lot of systems. Also with the older version we are like stuck on MULEC 3.9. Nevertheless, what you do get are like some unique cases. I must say they're still like using the same case. They didn't improve anything so far I know. So what you see with this is that we did like the Super Console X. When it came out, it was something completely new. So at the back we do get like the HDMI connection. And that's still of course super convenient if you want to use it on a modern television. They rushed the Pro version later on with let's say a new chip inside but there was nothing pro about it. It was like the same stuff with the same problems and unfortunately also with the same MULEC. And that was for me like a little bit of a bummer and like that, that, that just happens a lot with them and you will see it more and more often where we're going to talk about the game boxes here on the channel. So consider subscribing and keep up to date. But I briefly want to show you the super cold slick stick. I think this was like a very cool design idea. It's a little bit too wide so sometimes if you're going to plug it in your television you will have the problem that will cover up your other port next to it. But beside that point, I think it's a pretty damn cool idea. So what you can do is like plug in your controller at the back with two USB. And yeah, we do have like some limitations, especially when it comes to the heat. Like this thing gets really hot and there's not a lot of let's say, ways to cool this thing. But beside that, I think it was pretty cool. You plug it in, you can bring it with you very easily. It can just play like crazy amount of games on it. So we had this normal version, the pro version. 
and I found this weird looking turbo edition. Yeah, so I'm just going to call this the turbo edition and this makes no sense whatsoever. I don't know if it's the same manufacturer. It was because I think it was back in the day only one seller on AliExpress basically who sold this. And I will give you a look why this call is a freaking turbo version. I was complaining a lot on the heat problem and they did manage to find a solution for it. I want to say like it's going to be the most beautiful solution. But I must say like it was absolutely turbo and gigantic because they stacked this big block of aluminium at the top with a fan inside. It was not sounding like a super vacuum cleaner so that was a good thing. But when you're looking at the case, unfortunate also here, they basically in my opinion make the same mistake but not upgrading the internal parts. Another thing was also kind of weird, like they didn't give it even a name. The turbo stuff that is something I just personally like came up with and just gave it a name. Because calling this thing the Super Console X makes no sense anymore. Like we have the normal, as I said over here, we have the Pro. And they should call it like the Super Console X Turbo or something like that. Because that is what it is in my opinion. It's not like super high clock now. Because you would expect like with better cooling you can clock it or you can do something crazy with it. No, nothing at all. But when you're looking at everything, like the specs, yeah, there was nothing like big of a deal with this. So when looking at three models, there is not like a big jump uh, when it comes to specifications it's just the same stuff all over again in my opinion and that's a little bit of a bummer so that makes this jungle inside a jungle and i mean what is like there are so many of these boxes when you see them all you feel confused so in my opinion the turbo version is of course the way better of the three simply because we do have like way better cooling so this is more like the first generation of these things and of course the first generation was with the stick and of course the two models over here so this is like the third, first generation of Super Console X. It brought something completely new to, let's say, the like the jungle of machines that we could pick up. It's quite interesting, but it's like unfortunate to have some limitation when it comes to playing some games. They also like offer it with DC or Dreamcast and N64, but we know like a lot of games will not run perfect on this. But that's something we're also going to explain how and what. So then came the, let's say, newer generation. Yeah, it was quite very quickly that they released some new models and one of them at the right was the Super Console X Cube. That isn't really a cube, kind of confusing. But the thing is, like, I really like this new generation because it brought new opportunities. So here we have like the version that is actually like the same thing that we have seen before with the HK1 box. It's just actually an Android box with a sticker on it. And of course the one that we already mentioned is the HK1 box, a very cool box. But not the way how you pick it up with the Super Console X kit. You will have like three options with the newer, let's say, now what's in a newer generation, but the better chipset with better, like say, performance. But then we have like some downsides to some of them that I want to mention here. The HK1 box is maybe one of my favorite boxes to pick up if you want to see like what can you do with it, like what, what you can play with it, etc. But the thing is like if you're going to buy this thing in a kit, you're paying a shitload of money for it. And if you're going to buy it in the sale, I think the cheapest I ever found was 39 freaking euro. Yeah, so that's absolutely bargain price if you're going to pick a one up and you just slap your own Xbox 360 controller on it. Grab an SD card with some emulator because you can download it freely. You can make yourself like an absolutely cheap emulation beast. Yeah. And not to forget that this thing produces a lot of heat. There is no active fan and that is something of a big bummer if you ask me. Because these things get really hot. There is a more like a basic solution for it. But, and again, like I really personally like to have a preferred fan in it. Because it needs to be cool. And that's the same problem with this one. So here you do see like they put their own like logo on it with Kin Hank 8K Ultra HD because yeah, there's nothing 8K about it. Maybe it supports an 8K television, but but in the end, like it's just a typical Android box. Yeah, it came with the S905 X3. This was like a, let's say a big improvement, but it was like a minor step up. It came now with 4 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabyte internal storage. Not that we're going to use this with any Amalek, of course. Android 9, of course, because it's an Android box, you can use it like an Android box. But it does also there have like some limitations. So when you're looking at this bloody thing, I must say like I didn't like the style, how it looks, the round shape, stuff like that. And again, where is the freaking fan? In the same lineup, I must say that I found this cube version. I must say they did some, they did something unique. You know, I can really appreciate it, and that is something that I really liked about it. So inside the box, we're going to get a lot of junk. But what I liked about it is, of course, 
the case itself. It is not like something unique because it's just a nice mini classic casing. But the way how this thing is, is pretty damn cool. At the front, we're only going to get ourselves four freaking USB ports. Then we do have like an on and off switch that we're missing with the other models like the hockey puck and of course the HQ1. But both don't have a freaking on and off switch. That is one of those saying in the beginning that is so freaking annoying. And for me, this is like an Android box with a piece of software on it because actually that is what it is. But this makes it a little bit more giving it like a gaming feeling. And that is something I really like. The sticker quality, it's okay. I'm going to be expecting to get it, let it be falling off very quickly. But then we have like, of course, the HDMI signal that we can put in your television. The AV out with these things never works so far, I know. So when you're looking at it, like unfortunate, this thing did come with some freaking downsides to it. So with the new lineup, we did get some new options, what is quite interesting. But again, like they're still using the same kind of technology, just an Android box, slap a sticker on it and slap an Emmy Alec on it. You can just make it yourself. But that's uh, like, you're going to pay uh, way more money for it. And of course you're going to get uh, some crappy controllers that we're going to talk about later. But beside that, like the casing, I must say the Cube is still one of my favorite ones for the new generation due of the casing. But specification wise, yeah, you would like to look at the HQ1 box, especially when you're going to get yourself like a separate box it is so much cheaper to get it yourself and it's absolutely great for performance but it's getting really hot to make it even more confusing they released this freaking thing i must say i really love the collectible clay case you can bring this thing with you very easy you're going to get yourself the new super console x console so i'm more like okay i need to pick it up it came in all kinds of cool colors i picked up the purple with white version i really liked it but yeah, there is a thing. They are like frill, still freaking doing the same thing. So we have this new model. And I was thinking, this is going to be the next level of shizzle. But nope, they are just doing the same thing all over again. So when you're looking at all the other models that I've talked about in this video, they are just having the same thing all over again. Yep, the Super Console X Pro was just actually like a different color. A new kind of, yeah. I want to say even case design because it's actually say the same like just in different color with the same kind of specifications and that makes it so confusing that is the reason i wanted to make like this completely follow-up video just to show you what kind of models there are so this is just the old school lineup with different kind of minor things for example with a different chipset called the x or the l or you know stuff like that but when you're looking at this like the console x is like especially the new version that they released this year it's the same stuff all over again it's just an like an, an model that we're having with a different color and not even better than the turbo version because that is something i don't get like we're having the normal the pro then we have like this weird looking like came out of nothing like turbo version that has actually like an improvement and then they guys go back to the drawboard and they bring out this version that has just like only a different color case in other words quick cash grab all right so what i did like about this new model that they have some minor improvements in place so i must say i was not like really flabbergasted but i was surprised to see that they finally did some improvements that i personally was waiting for so to begin with what i understand of they are using the way faster chips so we do have like the great performance that we had with the new generations but then we have like this weird looking version so they absolutely like i didn't completely tear down on this thing but also they like didn't completely like overhaul. So aesthetic, I don't know if I can say that it's beautiful, but I must give them some extra kudos for trying. So they basically like slapped up this top and they like tried to improve it for the cooling. I do have like the idea they are listening to the people or just like me are bitching about the cooling in general because they are getting really hot the cases and if it's going to be good in overall, I think not at all. And this is going to be like a minor improvement. So that's a good thing. They also give it like their own unique touch to it. Again, like you can buy these, like say Android boxes for very cheap, but this one does not have, like if you're going to get the original one without the cooling, because this is something they absolutely did themselves. It also came with an USB 3.0 port, so it's convenient if you want the data transfer. So this thing also comes with some minor upgrades. So it's not like the most beautiful thing you can pick up, but it was absolutely a big improvement. The last release video I made was this Super Console X X2. So basically this is again a downgrade and that's the most annoying thing they're doing. They are grabbing something from the shelf, sometimes doing like a minor improvement, but then overall they are bringing us the same crap all over again. Sometimes it's even like worse than the other one. 
But the Super Console X2, it's absolutely a weird thing going on here. Because they grabbed a completely different Android box this time, they did some modifications when it comes to the software. They even told me that they did some modification to the chip, I personally don't believe them. Because when you're looking at it, this thing comes with the S905L model, this means it is not faster than the X2. Doesn't even matter, I did a full review about it, we're also doing quick chit chat, but the other thing is like, they came with a very nice looking USB hub, and for a good reason. And I just wanted to show you something that is quite interesting. So when you're having this device, let's say, let's grab the first generation model, this thing came with a built-in SD card over here. This thing doesn't have the option, no. So this thing actually has like an USB that need to be sacrificed over here. So it's kind of funny using your 3.0 port over here, or a 3.0 port, I mean like a 3.0, 3.0 hub, but we have like a 2.0 port. So it's not like the fastest speed out there. There's a kind of weird situation going on on and, and like this is absolutely downgrade. Like you should have like an internal SD card in place. It's so much better so you can use the USB hubs without this thing dangling around. So, you know, like I was a little bit disappointed with this too. It looks cool. I was thinking this may be the next generation. It looks like the next generation with this stealth looking case, but it's absolutely a downgrade from the previous one. So this is more like the complete collection when it comes to the cheap to the cheap chip versions or some of them are like quite expensive. But later on we're also going to talk about which is the best box for what kind of let's say certain person or also like what kind of games you can play. But it was one thing I completely forgot and that was this boy. The king of them all. Yeah, so basically the GT King, it's like another Android box they just used without any sticker whatsoever. Yeah, it's the same thing with the HK1 box, like the same story. There's no like modification done here and also when it comes to the cooling. So when you're looking at the GT King, it's absolutely the king of all of these boxes. So when you're looking at the emulation performance and the thing you can do with this combined with Emulic, because that's actually what it is, you can play a lot of cool things. But there are some things that you need to know. The GT King suffers from some problems. So let's talk about that. So the first thing is like, when you're looking at the specs, this thing comes with the S922X model of a chipset. It's way powerful than all the other ones, but not powerful enough to run God of War on PlayStation Portable. Later on, we're going to talk about that more. Specification wise, it's all cool. It's all fancy. It's absolutely the king of them all. But when you're looking at the heat, this thing has the same freaking problem like with the first generation. I don't know I'm the biggest fan of the GTK when it comes to the heat, simply because there was no like say active cooling implemented in this and there was also no way of cooling it down. So in the, some of my videos I did like implement a new thermal paste that had like some let's say better results, but in the end it still heats up because there was no active cool cooling it down or sucking the air out of this bloody thing. Okay, but what is the best one for you? That is of course the question of the day that I also want to try to answer. So when you're having all of these kind of boxes, the first thing you need to ask yourself, which one do you like when it comes to not only the cooling performance, just the way how it looks, because that is of course important and very personal. So what I really like about it is of course, we do have like some interesting models, but what can we play with it? The Super Console X, the latest pro version, the old pro version. Of course, then we're having like the original version and the Turbo Edition. So they are all having one thing, and let's say they are like all similar when it comes to, let's say, specification and what can it play. So let's talk about that. So if you want to like want yourself like a cheap box, I think the Turbo Edition is still one of my favorite ones because of the better cooling. But beside that point, I'm gonna say when you're looking at the overall performance for old school stuff, think about 8 bit, 16 bit, stuff like that, it runs just fine. And it's just a great box. Of course, the Turbo has the best cooling, so in my opinion, it's my first number one choice when it comes to the old school stuff. It's maybe not the cheap to the cheap, cheap one, but it's still a very nice one. But yeah, that is basically if you want to get into the old school stuff and you don't care about, let's say, let's say younger than PlayStation 1, think about Dreamcast, stuff like that, it is just fine. All right, so the next generation was the S905 X3. And X3 is not like superb, like when it comes to the S905 chipset. It's way better. It has like some new functionalities, especially when you're looking at the Emmy Alec part. We have some new emulators. So if you're going to like to play some Sega Saturn Dreamcast, there we have like some better performance. And I must say that I personally really think it's pretty damn awesome. But if you don't really care about it, yeah, that is like basically a waste of money. Especially when you're looking at the old school stuff, MAME, there was not improvement over there. Still have like same problems. We don't have the option to play Tekken MAME or like in Killer Instinct. There was no problem that had been solved with the new chipset. 
again like the new version did had like a better cooling solution so i'm very glad they did something like that aesthetic it didn't look really great but again like it was a minor improvement so for the people who are just interested in play some dreamcast we had some better performance over there then we had the gt king the gt king was absolutely the king of them all but when you're looking at the overall performance of the gt king i have talked about it many times here on the channel so with playstation portable basically that is something we need to have more power for or like some gamecube emulation or playstation 2 in my opinion psp was like a mixed bag and it was absolutely like a big bummer in general like we do have like some better performance for sega saturn not perfect far, far from very perfect and still like we're having some problems with mame so the gt king was the king of them all but it still like have a lot of problems and limitations. But in short, there are basically three ways to go to. We have like the S905, the old school, let's say the first generation of Super Console X. The next step is over here. Then we have like the S905 X3. It was like a minor step up, but I already mentioned we could play some Dreamcast games, Sega Saturn, we have some more options, but still like a lot of stuff that was implemented in Emmy Alec didn't run perfectly. And then we having like the King, take consideration they never released the pro version of the GT King, that was way better with cooling. We're going to talk about it maybe later in a different video. But again, like when you're looking at the step from the S905 X3 to the GT King, it was again like a minor step because a lot of problems I think about n64 wasn't still fixed we had like a lot of problems and again like there are like minor steps from each other so yeah for you in my opinion if you're going to get yourself like this model the turbo version especially because of the better cooling you're going to get yourself like like an overall fun experience when it comes to old school stuff and this was just like a minor step up but it has some cool like improvements and the gt king it's the maybe the king for the performance my main opinion it doesn't make any sense guiding something like this because in the end when you're looking at the king yeah we have like some better performance but the price was absolutely outrageous and it's maybe better to get yourself like a mini pc but we're going to talk about again like in different video consider subscribing hit the little bell it would be great to see you in the next video and i hope my video helped out with your choice in the jungle of freaking king boxes <sighs>